In example 17.1, we're asked to analyze this uh, truss for three specific uh, member forces, BC, FG, and AH. So there's a variety of approaches, of course, we could take method of joints or method of sections. Um, that at least those are the formal titles. In reality, all we got to do is figure out the quickest, easiest way to figure out these things. And I look at this and I see two of these forces are in the same panel of this vertically oriented truss. So the first thing I think about doing as a free by diagram is to chop right through the truss horizontally. And it's going to turn out we're going to find some complicating things here um, that will with these chevron braces that here's the chevron that maybe make this harder than your typical truss might be so we'll end up it turns out doing not doing it twice but we're going to take a look here and see how complicated it turns out to be and then try to come up with a simpler approach and it'll turn out that there is one it's a little clever kind of thing and not what you usually think of with a method of sections so let's get our applied forces on here. These are horizontal forces. Uh, this magnitude, they probably represent the wind. And on the tributary area of the exterior panels, from which then um, they become point loads into the truss as they flow through the exterior system. And so there's B, C, F, G. Notice, notice that I anticipate that we're going to have an overturning effect of these forces in a counter or rather clockwise manner and that will make the columns on the right hand side go into compression and the columns on the left hand side be in tension. Likewise these diagonals might be oriented that way. Oh phooey. Notice here we got one, two, three, four unknowns. Now we you might start making arguments about how these two are symmetric and adding pieces of information, but we don't want to do that. Because we don't really know that. We can't prove that yet. So this actually begins to be kind of complicated. If I sum moments about point J, then, okay, I get rid of the two diagonals, but I still have FD and BC as unknowns. Some forces in the Y, I got all four of these included. Um, that's not very easy either. So here's the clever technique, and that is to, instead of going purely horizontally, instead to cut and go around this joint, in our method of section. And so when you do that, you get a nicer looking little deal here that will turn out to be advantageous. And in reality, I sort of hinted at what the approach will be. The key is going to be that those di offending diagonals will no longer be causing difficulties for us. Instead, we've got two horizontals that are in there. We still have the verticals that are B, C, and F, G. But note now that if we were to sum moments about J, yeah, okay, these horizontals go away. We still have F, G, and B, C in there. But wow, <clears throat> look what happens with equilibrium if we take the obvious part, which is for this free by diagram, let's call this A and B, that if we sum forces in the Y, then we only have B, C, and F, G in it. And that tells us that the two are equal, although in opposite direction, one's compression, one's intention. Um, if I had tried to assume that back in A, I have no way to really easily prove it. It would have been a purely an assumption, but now I've proven it with the second free by diagram, and that makes it a lot easier now. We can sum moments about J, and away we go. We've got 1,200 with a moment arm of 2 meters going uh, clockwise. And then we have BC going the other way. It's at also two meters away from J, perpendicular wise, plus the two times FG is also the, the two meters. 
And yes, it turns out that FG is the same as BC. And we set that equal to zero. And we get good stuff here um, that we have 4BC is now equal to 2 times 1200. And of course, that means BC is equal to 1 half of the 1200 or 600. We are in Newtons. Uh, BC was shown in tension, FG then is equal to 600 newtons, but it is shown in compression, and that's at least two of our answers that were requested. Now the third is actually kind of a trick. It's a trick because what we have shown here is a pin support at A and a pin support at H, which means those two locations, A and H, cannot move. And if they can't move, if the member AH can't stretch nor can it compress, it means that it doesn't change or it's not uh, responding to the applied forces. So it is a zero force member. And you might ask them, why the heck is that member even there? There's a, a variety of reasons why it might still exist. Uh, one of them is um, because what if a, H, a or H were to fail, then you'd have a redundant system. Uh, that would not be common. Um, I think it has more to do with probably uh, a level of sloppiness on the graphic artist associated with the textbook. Okay, so there you go. Is our uh, We've got the three forces that we were asked for. And this last one is zero because uh, member is connected directly to two so-called fixed, meaning they don't move pin supports.